Nehemiah was an angry man. He was working on a normal job, serving the king. But he became angry and depressed and frustrated. And the king says, Nehemiah, why are you depressed? Why are you so angry? Why are you so frustrated? And Nehemiah said, how can I be happy when my city is broken down and the walls are in rubbles and the people are shattered? His anger was his assignment. Leaders are born out of anger. Esther was an angry woman. She saw her people about to be annihilated and her anger made her fearless. The problem with most Nigerians is that they are not angry. Whatever you tolerate, you will never change. Whatever you complain about and accept will never be transformed. We need angry people in Nigeria to rise up and say, enough is enough. No more corruption. No more poverty. No more oppression. No more abuse. Are you angry, young man? Or are you just tolerating it? If you want to become the leader you were born to be, you have to find your anger. Jesus Christ, the ultimate, was angry. The Bible says he was moved by compassion. The Bible says he groaned in his spirit. Those words in Hebrew means anger. Compassion is anger against injustice. You can never change the world until you hate something. Stop living just to make a living. Find your anger, young man. Young woman, stop living to pay bills. Pay your debt to humanity. Find out what you're supposed to do before you die. Give your life in service to other people and change the world before you die. Find out your potential. Let me close with an important principle. When you see your anger it is called vision vision is your anger in pictures vision is when you see your purpose in technicolor vision is when you see your passion in pictures all great leaders became great because they saw their passion in pictures. I heard and I got to meet Mr. Mandela a couple of times and, and I heard him speak privately and he said, I saw a new South Africa. I was a lawyer, he says, with my law firm, but I couldn't settle down in law. I was too angry at apartheid. When you find your anger, your career becomes useless. Most people try to make a living instead of make a difference. This church is not supposed to be a place where you prepare people for heaven. This church must be a place to prepare people to take over earth. This is the place where you're supposed to discover your potential and tap into your purpose and find your anger and leave these walls and transform Nigeria into a new country. That's why God sent you here to make a difference, not just to make a living. The greatest future is still ahead of you.
I see powerful people in this room today. You young man, you will change the world. You young woman, God's going to use you. You're going to change this nation. If you believe that, lift your hands and shout yes. And God always raises a visionary to activate the visions of others. Moses was raised up to give the people a vision of a promised land. Jeremiah was raised up to inspire the people to believe for a greater future. Nehemiah was raised up to give the people a vision of a new city that they could rebuild. And Jesus was raised up to give us a vision of the kingdom of God that's coming to earth. And I believe that this ministry was raised up to give a new image for South Africa, for North Africa, for Central Africa, for Central Africa, for Western Africa. This nation, Nigeria, was raised up by God to set a standard for Africa. And he raised up this city to be the light that shines in Nigeria. This city. Now listen to me carefully. In Matthew chapter 20, God says these words through Jesus the Son. He said, if you want to be great, you must become a servant to all men. Your potential was given to you to serve the world. Whatever you were born with is not for you. It is for the world. And leadership is born when you find your gift, your passion, your potential to serve the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to challenge this church to understand that this man is carrying a vision. And this ministry is only a small part of that vision. Listen to me carefully, please. I speak with authority today. Every visionary every visionary comes first as a person. God never gives a group a vision. God has never given a group a vision. He always gives a vision to one person. Moses, Joshua, Abraham, Esther, Deborah. He always gives a vision to one person. But that one person understands that the vision doesn't belong to them. It belongs to the people. And that vision is to stimulate the potential in everybody around you. So here's how visions work. They are given to a person. Then that person creates a team. Moses was given the vision of a new land, milk and honey, flowing with wealth. And Moses had to share that vision with a group of people. His sister joined him. His brother joined him. His nephew joined him. He had a group around him. Caleb and others came around the vision. And Moses said, this is the vision I see. A land with milk representing cattle and honey representing agriculture. He said, I see a land filled with prosperity and wealth. And the people believed the vision. And over one million people came out and joined the visionary. But listen to me carefully. Visions always begin with a personality. 
people attach themselves to the person who has the vision when I began our ministry in the Bahamas I was the visionary and I gathered seven people around me and today we have built the largest ministry in the country which affects millions of people around the world and everybody looked to me because I was the visionary and I remember after the first 10 years the Lord said to me I told you that I will raise you up to go and impact the third world countries that's over 4 billion people you must minister to and I was living on an island 7 miles wide 20 miles long that's where I still live and I couldn't believe how can I impact 4 billion people and I live in a little village on an island 7 miles wide and God says transfer the people's allegiance from you to the vision the people became attached to me they wanted to see me every Sunday they wanted to help me pray for them lay my hands on them and counsel them and meet with their children and baptize them and dedicate their kids they wanted me 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 and the Lord says transfer the people's allegiance from you to the vision so the first 10 years I built a strong church and for the first 10 years I gathered 22 people around me and I poured my life into them and I said to them you will not see me in the future and they became very sad I said look I have to transfer the vision to you because I have to go to the other phase of the vision I've got to go and hit the world I got to impact the world and after the first 10 years no one understood what I did I chose my brother-in-law I said I want to lay hands on you and present you to the people and the people were confused I said do not be confused I'm going to lay my hands on this man because he shall be the pastor of this local church that I've built the largest church in the country I was giving it to someone else I laid hands on him and I ordained him I said you are not a pastor of this church and for the next four years we spent every day together I poured my life into him because my passion was for the world and I knew I couldn't reach the world and still be tied to the local church and after four years I got a phone call one day a simple phone call the phone call said hello Dr. Monroe this is your friend Carlton Pearson I said hi Carlton he said look I have a problem I have 15,000 people in an auditorium at a conference here in the United States in Tulsa and Archbishop Bensonita Hosa was supposed to be here to speak tonight and he can't make it he is stuck in England and I need a speaker to take his place and God told me to call your country and tell you to come all the way to America to speak tonight 15,000 people waiting and I don't know who's gonna speak and you the one God told me to bring I said are you sure he said yes so I caught an aircraft flight flew to Tulsa arrived at 5 o'clock went straight to the auditorium 15,000 people packed in to this big auditorium called the maybe center and I walked on the stage they gave me the microphone and all the teaching that I was teaching to that church in the Bahamas for 10 years 
who is ready for the world. I grabbed the microphone, I began to speak on purpose. It was the only night that TBN and Paul Crouch was present for the meeting. They just showed up that one night and I was the speaker. And suddenly they sent that message around the world to over 600 million people. And in one night, my life was transformed. And I asked God, why did you expose me that way? He said, because your time has come to reach the world. And my church fellowship knew my potential had shifted. You know, when, when Moses was about to leave the people and he went up in the mountain, it was a test. Because when he left them physically, they began to want to see him. And they waited for days and days wanting to see him, waiting for days and days. And they became so frustrated, they decided to start their own ministry. The same leaders that began with me 30 years ago are still with me 30 years later. Same leaders. It's amazing that when the visionary begins to expand, like Moses, he had to go to the mountain for a while. People in the camp started thinking, he ain't coming back. He's leaving us. Let's start our own ministry. So they began to create their own cow, their golden calf. And they built their own ministries. It was a test to see if they could handle his absence. And when he came back, he was shocked to see a church he did not build. He was shocked to hear a message he never taught. He was shocked to see an altar he never established. He said, what are you doing? I couldn't be away for just 30 days and you've already started another work? Don't you get the vision? The vision is not about me, it's about the land God told us belongs to us. And Moses says, the Lord will allow none of you to go in. Moses kept telling them about the land. They wanted Moses. They were supposed to want the land. The vision is always greater than the visionary. Capture the vision of this church. I am here today away from the church in the Bahamas because I don't need to be there. Because great leaders make themselves unnecessary. True leaders work themselves out of a job. Leadership is about leaving. The vision is more important than the visionary. The vision will outlive the visionary. Moses had to transfer the people's trust from him to the vision. And there was a young man named Joshua who caught it. And those who wanted to depend on Moses all died in the desert. But Joshua understood the vision. It's about the land. 
And when Moses died, Joshua said, Lord, I'll take them. And God said, Joshua, I will be with you the way I was with Moses. When Jesus came to earth, listen carefully, he did not preach himself. He kept preaching about a kingdom that was coming. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. He taught about a country called heaven. That was his vision. That was his mission. That was his assignment to bring the kingdom of God to earth. And after three and a half years of training them, he said to them, I am leaving you now. And the Bible says in John 15, they became depressed. They became angry. They became frustrated. And he said to them, why are you frustrated? Why is your heart downcast? Why are you so depressed? And they said, because you said you're going away. And Jesus said, of course I'm going away. But I'm leaving with you the vision. The Holy Spirit shall continue to teach you what I taught you. It's time for you to grow up. He said, before now, you never prayed in my name because you had me with you. But I'm leaving you now, he says. It's time to grow up. You must now pray to the Father for yourself in my name. You can't talk to me directly anymore. You got to use your own faith and use my name to get things from your Father. He was weaning them of him as a personality to the vision. I've come to tell you this great church it's time for you to grow up and be the leaders of this city. The greatest act of this church is yet to come. And listen carefully. And Jesus said, it is better for you that I go away. Jesus said, it is better for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, you will not do greater works. Hmm. I have made myself unnecessary. So our church grows in my absence. They don't need me anymore because true leadership is about leaving. It is better for you that I go away, Jesus said. If I do not go, you will do not do greater works. And so he led them out to a hill and he said go into all the world and take the good news of the kingdom that I gave you to every creature and then he told them I must go now and they watched him as he went up and he vanished into the clouds. He went into the next dimension. 
And the Bible says, they stood there for hours looking up. Wanting him to come back. Wishing he would come back. Waiting for him to come back. Hoping he didn't leave. You know, sometimes when the visionary goes away, you don't come to church. Hmm. Why? You're watching. Sometimes the visionary goes away and you refuse. To show up for a meeting because you're watching. You believe that God can't speak through anybody else. I've come to tell you that it's your time now. And they stood there looking. He's gone leaves us. He's always leaving us. And an angel came and said to them, Why stand you here gazing? There's work to do. Get away from here. Go into the world and do what he says. The world is waiting for you. And this same Jesus that you saw leaving you today, he says, shall return in like manner, but for now you go into all the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I come as an apostle to this church. And as a prophetic voice to this ministry, I've never been here before. I don't know you and I don't know this church, but I've come to tell you as a messenger from God, your greatest days are still ahead of you. But God has raised up this man to do greater works. And for him to do greater works, you must be prepared to do greater works. It's time for those who believe in this vision to embrace the vision and take responsibility for this vision and take this vision to the next level. Moses never went into the promised land. Joshua did. You are going to take this ministry to its greatest potential. You are going to build the next buildings. You are going to buy the properties. You are going to establish the television stations. You are going to build the radio stations. You are going to go into government and change the city. You are going to become the governors and the mayors and the commissioners. You are going to transform this state. This is now your time. I prophesy today that this church has arrived at the point where it's time for you to rise up and take responsibility for this vision. Stop waiting for your visionary to do it. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time, said the Lord. Rise up and take your potential and fulfill your purpose. The hour has come for you to stop looking to your pastor as God 
and look to God as God. Because this day, I prophesy, God will do greater works through you than he's done through your pastor. 